Yo, what's good YouTube? I am back. I am back with another reaction video. We back with this part two. We hit 2K subs, man. I just want to thank y'all. My next video, I was going to do a toast, but my next video, I'm going to definitely do a toast. But thank y'all so much, man. Appreciate y'all from the bottom of my heart, man. Like, this is just crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Just like, I'm just... Just like I told you, I'm just blown away, man. I appreciate y'all so much, man. I'm just gonna keep grinding, keep going up. We're not gonna do too much talking, but I appreciate y'all, man. We're just gonna keep going. Let's get straight into the video. I know that's what we came for, but let's get straight into it. Thank y'all so much. But let's get straight into the video. Let's get straight into it. We back at it. We back at it. A very confident player. Yeah, but uh, like they bird especially and I mean had a whole nother level of confidence than I ever was able to accomplish and achieve but he just gave you so much confidence like you could just he, you could depend he, on him you could just see like his yeah. confidence right. and like everybody just like added to everybody else's confidence how was it when you first met him like what was that interaction like and in getting to like getting to know him he was great. I mean, he was a worker. We played a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, full court, like half court, full court basketball, just, you know, in practice every day. I got to know Larry really well, but he was a great worker, a great teammate. Um, you know, he told me like when I, when he didn't think I was taking good, a good shot. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time uh, when they start complaining, oh, the coach doesn't believe in me or the, my, my, the star player on our team doesn't believe in me. I go, bro, when I played with Bird, he he'd pass it. He'd get double teamed. He'd throw me the ball. But if I miss three, he's not come. I'm not coming back to me. <laughs> right up. You got to earn those shots. You do. Yeah. You got to earn the respect of your coach and your star players all the time. You got to earn that respect. Get, you know, every game you got to like be reliable and dependable. And that, and that was what I loved about Bird. Everybody talk about how Bird, his trash talking is legendary. As his teammate, like, what was it like the first time you saw, or or can you give a story, him telling somebody, I'm about to come off this screen? Because we didn't have Worthy on here, and Worthy, like, yo, he said, I'm about to do this, that, that, then he come right off and do it. Well, I mean, Larry had it. Larry was a quiet guy, and he wasn't, like, a, a loud and obnoxious personality, um, but he had a great sense of humor, and he, <laughs> he was a character. Right. and. Most of the time, his trash talking, it seemed like it was for motivation. It wasn't like he was just always trash talking to yeah. everybody. It was just, it was spotty. But when he did it, it was big. Right. You know, like I'm going to, you know, is uh, Xavier McDaniel's story where, you know, I'm going to shoot it fake here, fake here, shoot it there. And, you know, he, <laughs> and he did exactly. And it had nothing to do with the play call. Right. Like our coach would call timeout and we're going to do this. And like we walk on the court and Bird just looks at me and goes, no. Give me the ball right there. <laughs> and then he does what he told McDaniel he was going to do. Uh, I saw playoff games where, you know, we're trying to exploit a matchup. Mikhail's having an amazing game against Milwaukee. I remember in Milwaukee. And uh, so we're running a post up for him against Marcus Johnson. And uh, so I set a cross screen for Mikhail, comes in the post. I come off a down screen and I look up and I go, he ain't passing the ball. <laughs> He's just holding the ball, like looking at McHale in the post like this, and then boom, just shoots the three and makes it. But, you know, he just had his, he just really wanted to motivate himself. Mm -hmm. But the most uncharacteristic one was he didn't usually trash talk to like Magic, um, Dr. J, you know, guys like that. He just, you know, he had so much respect for them. But I remember the big fight between him and Dr. J where yeah. Moses and, was and we're holding him back was, and yeah. dr j was swinging it was like <laughs> so uncharacteristic of dr j as you guys know dr j right. i mean he's the nicest guy in the world definitely yeah. but uh larry had scored like 35 on him like halfway <laughs> through the third quarter and was just jogging back down the court and said man you need to retire mm. <laughs> and it was just like dr j lost his mind and like and that's where that story had Andy started. One but of the best, <laughs> biggest trash talkers that you'll ever see in your see, life. That's All right. Okay, that's Larry what I want to hear more about. More trash on the court than anybody. He tell you where he's going. He tell you when he catches. There's nothing you can do about it. He, he, he was, and it was, it was, it was great trash talking because it wasn't vulgar. I mean, he right. wasn't, you know, pounding his chest. 
you can just be standing next to him. You know, I would jump out and try to block a shot on rotation, and, and he'd say, face. Scott, Scott, you're not getting that. Why are you even jumping? Why are you <laughs> running out of So as a youngster, can you guys, starting with you, Paul, think of players oh, no. that you didn't like <laughs> growing up oh, this is, or even teams? This is very odd. Does that have to be basketball? It could be any sport. Right. It could be oh, boxing. It could be baseball. Well, I, I was a... I have a basketball fan, and growing up in Los Angeles, Inglewood, down the street from the Forum, I couldn't stand the Celtics. That is crazy, right? I hated the Celtics Poetic so justice. much. That makes sense. You understand the rivalry? I hated Larry Bird. I hated just That's everything about the Celtics. So it's real ironic that I get drafted by the Celtics. Uh, going to be up there with all the great Celtics. You know, Larry Bird is one, you know, probably the, one of the most important players that ever play in this franchise. And just to be up there, <clears throat> have your name up there with him is a great honor. You know, to me, even until today, one of my favorite stories is the left-handed story. I'm pretty sure most of you guys know that story, but this, to me, is the perfect example of what 80s and 90s NBA basketball was um, was all about. You know, that, that cockiness, but always backing it up, you know? Um, I remember when I still used to play, it was always so funny when you had guys who were trash talking but could not back it up, and it was like, why are you even talking? But to hear the stories, and you hear those stories from like every player on the planet that played against Larry Bird, that he was always able to back it up, and that just shows what a sensational player he was. Let's take a look. Changed man. by the coach, he's installed Jerome Kersey in the starting lineup. Well, he's put a tiger in the tank. He feels that Jerome Kersey is going to give him some aggressiveness, particularly against Larry Bird. He'll be Jerome Kersey's guarding Larry. And I think his first eight or ten points were left-handed. And at that point, uh, Mikhail was still coming off the bench. And, and so we score, Larry scores his, his sixth point on a left, some kind of left-handed shot. Bird against Kersey. And, and, and Mikhail goes, hey, Jerome, when do we start shooting right-handed? Change <laughs> for Bird, another three-point try. Well, left hand is one thing, but when the game got close, I had to go back to the right one. I think it went right down the wire, and, and we might have won by Bird one can't point. can't beat you right there. you got to keep them under control. They don't. And the Blazers have timeout with three seconds remaining. His ability to just bring it out every single day. You know, he could outscore you. He could out-rebound you. Bird kept it alive to one for two. Oh, what a play! He could pass better than you. He could defend better than you. He could lead better. He could dribble better. He could set up plays. He could be the decoy. He could do it all. Bird lines up three-pointer. Yes, Bird's last three-pointer, so he tries another one. Bird, well, you had the Bird night. I had the Bird Northern night. Yeah, Orleans. yeah, that was, that was a tough night, man. <laughs> That, you know, that, the biggest argument that night is, uh, well, you only scored six on me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But did, you, nobody was guarding Bird, were they? Well, we were trying. You were trying no, to. You know, but when, when a guy is literally coming up to court calling his shots, uh, and, you know, Bird talked a lot of trash. Uh, um, and that's in New Orleans. That's in New Orleans. And that game, we're on the free throw line, and he's like, he literally says, um, left side <laughs> over uh, across the three, and you're listening to him. That's that's a tough filler. But, okay, so you guys got – Antoine Carr and Cliff Levingston got fined by Fratello, I think. For, and, and Eddie Johnson for celebrating. Celebrating Bird. Yeah, it was the best film session. Every time I – when I see Mike, we still laugh. God, it's it was so a, good. It was the greatest film session ever because that, back then you didn't have – you know, you watched the real game and just went, you know, with a video. And Mike rewound the celebration 20 times. Uh -huh. He just kept, re not the shot, he just kept rewinding it, showing the guys, you remember, they were giving each other high fives. And then, and then somebody falls off the bench. Yeah, too. that was when, Eddie Johnson. Yeah. Eddie Johnson falls off the bench in laughter, uh, and Antoine Carr and Cliff gives each other high five. And our film session was 20 minutes of that. <laughs> So it, it was. It wasn't it, somebody not playing good defense on no, Bird. It was you it was, guys celebrating just, Larry Bird. Fratello wouldn't let it go. He just kept rewinding. Oh vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> and it, it, it was. Uh, I think Bird uh, went by the bench one time too. He fell in a bench. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he, and he called that one. That was the one where he fell in it. He literally said, oh, no. uh, "Off the glass into the trainer." Did you ever get uh, yelled at by Jordan or Bird? Bird was the only one that really kind of, in, in his soft-spoken way, when you talk, talk about guys talking trash. Yeah. Hey, Rook, good to see you. Hey, 
Big Kyle's career. I'm going to catch the ball. I'm going to pump face. You're going to reach for it. You're going to get fouled. Two tweets. You're going to have a seat. Lord, the whole day, and he catches the ball. He pump face. I go for it. I reach. First foul. I come down court. Scott Skiles kicks me the ball. I shoot a three. In your face, Larry Legend. Yes, yes, I'm feeling good, man. He catches the ball again, catches it. My dumb self reaches for it again. Three tweet, go have a seat. I see second quarter, Rump. <laughs> so that, that's how Larry Bird. Uh, speaking of the shooting threes, Coach, we, have a, we had a poll question on here. Just to let you know, I had nothing to do with this poll question. I'm going to let one of the Danettes, McLovin, ask you this question because he's been dying to ask you this. Okay, if you had to bet a week's pay, who would win a three-point shooting contest, Larry Bird or Reggie Miller? Now? No. In In their prime. (laughs) Look, by the way, you won, just to let you know. You you won this. Here's how I'll put it, Reggie. If you was my teammate in the pros, I would win hands down. But since I had the opportunity, the great opportunity to coach you, I'd say you win. Oh, okay. I, look, I, I'm just letting you know. I picked you. It was a it was a dead tie two two. I was the tiebreaker. No question. You at the three point competition, walking in the locker room. Who's playing? Did you really say that? Who's playing for second? <laughs> Yeah, I did. I scored so bad <laughs> because I, I, you know, I, I didn't realize there's so much tension on it. You know, I'm out there every day in front of these fans. And who were some of know, the guys? Who were some of the guys in the competition at that time when you walked in? Who was in, in that field? You know, I, 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 come on, I coach. You Del. know? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't really remember. Dell Ellis. Um, Dell Ellis. Yeah, Dell. Uh, what's Hodges. the kid that's ref? Yeah, Hodges. John Sonbold. Yeah, the kid that's refereeing now. The one oh, that always um, right. Oh, uh, um, Lester. Leon Wood. Leon Wood. Leon, Leon Wood. Wood. Leon Wood never crossed the three point line. All he did was ever, ever, he was <laughs> always shot three. So I thought he might be the competition. And because I've seen him shoot before games, you know, he'd knock him down. So I'm, when I walked in there, he's sitting there. And I said, boy, them red, white, and blue, blue balls are so slippery, I can't hold on to them. And uh, the next time I came, I said, okay, now they're down the nitty-gritty. Who's coming in second? You already know who's going to win this. <laughs> and and what, I got lucky because I almost got beat in the first round. But what was the reaction after you said that, like, oh, that's just Larry Legend, or did it get dead silence in there? It was silent. My favorite trash talking by Larry. Hmm. And Kevin was a pretty good trash talker, too. But uh, Larry was when they, when they trash talk coaches, like when they trash talk Hubie Brown. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're sitting there playing in Madison Square Garden, and he's just going, like, taking the ball out of bounds in front of their bench so the whole bench can hear him. Right. Mm-hmm. And go, like, Hubie, this all you got for me tonight? Like, you got no one else that can guard me? This is getting ridiculous, you know? And and then Hubie would put in, like, Johnny Newman would be running in the game. He goes, wait, are you serious? <laughs> That's the guy you're putting on me? <laughs> But it was it was those subtle things that he said that were just I mean they were so funny but we loved it we loved, but even yeah. the other bench you know even Hubie's team in New York is like laughing yeah at, at birds trash talking I was the first guy really to guard Larry uh-huh. and I remember I was a, I was like you I was the king of the mountain man I was averaging about twenty and ten when Bird got here yeah. so I'm thinking he's coming to this building I'm looking at him but we have the first practice I'm thinking like. <laughs> It's all to be a piece of cake. Yeah. Guy don't look fast, don't look good. Yeah. I'm about to, you know, I'm about to do something to him. Yeah. Indiana. Boy, I'm telling you what, hey, it changed my opinion about racism in this world. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember he scored the first basket jet on me. I scored on him, second basket. But as I proceeded, he kept going further and further and further away. By the end of the practice, it finished. The first black person I went to, I got to, I said, you know what? That fucking white guy can play down. <laughs> a favorite Larry Bird story. I don't tell Larry Bird stories. <laughs> Do you tell Michael Jordan Larry stories? Bird. Um, Larry is, is such a unique personality. I don't have necessarily stories. I, mean, I just what I what what challenges me is I, I I marvel at people who think the guy is a hick. Larry is one of the smartest, pragmatic people I know. And I, and I mean, and my mother, God rest her soul, was very bright. Coach Knight is probably, Coach Knight and Bill Russell are probably the two brightest people that I know. 
Larry is, is, is maybe right under that in, in that, that, that category. And when people keep talking about him being a hick, Larry understood what he understands as well as anybody is personalities and people. And that's why he would do his junk talking for, the, for airing here on radio, because he understood people who would let that bother them and what they would do when it bothered them. That's, that's the way Larry, that was his gamesmanship. Um, so that's really the only story I can tell you about Larry. I just think he's one of the brightest guys that I know. So that, that's my story on Larry. What else you want to know? Well, <laughs> okay, didn't we talk about this before when you guys played the Chicago Bulls first round of the playoffs and you guys went out, it might have been you and Roby, and you went out with Bird and the Chicago Bull cheerleaders bought you beers figuring that they could get Larry drunk and then Larry lit them up and then walked off the floor and walked by the cheerleaders and said, thanks for the beers. <laughs> I didn't tell you the story, but the story is true. <laughs> that, that, is, that is very typically Larry. Okay. All right. he, knew right away, he, he knew what was happening. He knew right away what was happening. And, and again, okay, so we talk about motivation. For Larry, that's another motivation oh for him. So he could have that in his mind, so when he walked off the court, you know, he can let you know, hey, you can do whatever you want. That'd make a difference to me. I love that. <laughs> but that's Larry. I love that. That he knows that the cheerleaders are buying him beers, and then he just thanked him for the beers after I think you guys eliminated the Bulls. You never know. He was a trash talker? Oh, to other players. Okay. Oh, Not my. Oh, yeah. my. Rob, give us goodness. a couple of stories of him talking trash. I was going to say. Oh, my yeah. goodness. <laughs> one, thing, one thing you got to give Larry Bird, he could be red hot. Uh, ice cold, he never stopped talking trash. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. I got one, cool. I, 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 he, he, uh, we, uh Great story. Playing the Phoenix Suns, and their, their main man was Tom Chambers. And mm. Chambers was guarding, was guarding Larry. Shout out to Tom Chambers, too. I definitely going to do some more videos on Tom Chambers. I know some people was asking me to do some videos on him. Do some more videos anyway. But, um, yeah, I definitely got to make sure I check him out again. So he was definitely a nice, he was, yeah, he was definitely a nice high flower. High flower. <laughs> high flower. High flyer. <laughs> My bad. Anyway, let's get into it. And so in, in the jump ball circle, Larry walked through myself and, and uh, Chambers and then came back and told Chambers, I know you're guarding me, and I want you to know something. There's only one man that can guard me, and that's God. <laughs> now, now think about that for a second. Think about the confidence mm. and the arrogance it takes that's to make that There's someone that's very important to both of us. Larry Joe Bird. When I was a young child, I would pray to a Larry Joe Bird poster before I would go to games. Can you say that again? I would pray to a Larry. It was the legend poster. You know the poster, legend? Of course. And he's got the basketball, and he's just standing there, not an action shot. I would pray to it. I would say, Larry, let me get some buckets tonight. <laughs> and then I would leave the house. <laughs> but I was playing in That's Western classy. Massachusetts. You played for Larry Joe Bird in the National Basketball Association. I think it's another level. It hit different when you're in the Just NBA. a little bit. Yeah, it does. It Just does. a little bit. I've got an update on Larry Joe Bird. An artist named Muckrock wanted to do a tribute to Larry Bird in Found Square in Indianapolis. I like that name, Muckrock. So they made a mural. Problem is, they tatted up Larry. Whoa. And we had to blur out Was some of it. Was that a 76ers tattoo? We had to blur out some of it Got a Marcus because you, they had fornicating rabbits, web. fornicating rabbits on his arm. So you know what happened? Larry Bird don't play. Tats on his face. Sent the lawyers. Tattoo tears. Sent the lawyers. The lawyers said no, 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 no. You gotta take the tats off. So the artist had to redo the mural with the tattoos off. What do you think about Larry Bird having his lawyers remove the tattoos? From the mural. It comes with the territory. I mean, here's a gentleman that's been for public consumption for as long as we've been alive and has kept a pristine reputation. 
mm -hmm. has done so very much in the community. Obviously, he's a legend across the world, but especially in Indiana. And so when you see that, it's a mix of culture. And playing for Larry, following Larry while he was in the league, he's not saying take the tattoos off because he doesn't want um, the artists to express themselves. He's saying take it off because he doesn't want people to ever think that he's trying to represent something that he wasn't. Okay. And so in being around him long enough, I'm pretty sure that when he saw it, he was like, all right, that's probably not the representation that I want to have out there. Jalen, I love Larry so much. I will never, ever, ever tire of hearing Larry Bird's stories. When you were playing for him, right. did he ever yell at you? Yeah. What would he say? Get back, Jalen. Get on D. Oh, he, he expected you to play defense? <laughs> yeah. Help, Jalen. <laughs> it seemed like the only heard my name was on defense. Oh, I think he didn't call my name at all. On defense, I heard my name a lot. Did he ever give you a compliment? No, but in all honesty, like the B1000, oh, okay. Larry was the guy that helped validate me. My career needed to be refreshed. It mm -hmm. needed to be remixed. I played two years in Denver. First year, fortunately, I broke their rookie assist record. Second year, we made it to the playoffs. That offseason, I got traded. Third year, Indiana, Larry Brown gave me 15 DMPs. And he's a Hall of Fame coach that left. So now it's do or die for me as a young player. <clears throat> when Larry Bird talks to the media, it was like, I'm going to turn Jalen into the player that can going to live up to his potential. Yep. I cut that out and put that on the refrigerator, bro. I'm like, I'm about to own it. So coming off the bench for Larry and then being ushered into the starting lineup, Rick Carlisle, I got to owe him a lot of credit for my development, along with the vets I had on the team like Reggie Miller, Mark Jackson, Chris Mullen, the Davis boys in protecting me, my brother Travis Best. So, again, Larry Bird helped revitalize me to the point where now – I'm eating all of the steak and lobster that I ever want. I'm traveling across the world. You would think I, I Magic Johnson go to Italy and spend $10 million. <laughs> but I can go to Italy and spend 150 if I need to. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, question for you. What's Larry really like? Like, what's his personality? Because we hear a lot of different stories. What well, Larry is like the commercial EF Hutton. When he talks, people listen. Mm -hmm. It's not a waste of words. He could have dealt with Twitter at 140 characters. He didn't need it to be 180 or whatever it is now. And so being somebody that was straightforward and honest is the best thing you want as a professional. Hey, Jacoby, you working really hard. I am. But this matchup doesn't work for you. Well, tell me, when you watched Larry's game, Smitty, what it was that jumped out at you that has him held in such high regard throughout the NBA. Well, I think, Ernie, like we all know, it's a tough decision with those three. Unbelievable <laughs> players. But just to talk about Larry, for me to see the guy who can shoot the basketball, but then also be able to change his game up, but to do whatever he had to do to win. And then you got that arrogant, cocky guy, Larry Bird, trash talking all the time. And was he really arrogant? Was yeah. Was he really, really arrogant? Well, yeah, he, and he could back it up. So... Uh, <laughs> When you're arrogant and you can back it up, you're not arrogant. You're just good. And uh, and Larry was good. And uh, but the best guy I played against might have been uh, you know Larry Bird, someone yeah. like that. How good was Michael Bird? Jordan? People, I don't think people people, people look at him and think, yeah, oh, he's said, a white oh, no, guy, he's, slow he's, guy. The chubby white guy. He <laughs> wore us out. <laughs> you know, because he just this was this muscle here, the one between his ears. Yeah, that was his best, you know, because he, he made the three-pointers and he had assists and rebounded, steals. He was always at the right place at the right time. Listening to a game is New Mexico State playing Indiana State. I don't really care about the game, but I, New Mexico State is right up the streets from El Paso, and I went to UTEP, and we're big rivalries, so I'm hoping that Indiana State will beat New Mexico State. And I'm listening to the radio and I have no clue of the players on either team. All of a sudden, this name keeps coming. Bird, he goes to the right, Bird, he makes the shot, Bird. I said, God damn, who is Bird? Bird, you know, here's Bird, and Bird this, and, and Bird, oh, did you see the pass that Bird made? I can't see it, but I'm just trying to imagine it. When the time I got to the end, I said, damn, that brother can play. When I got the newspaper 
the next morning and saw Larry's picture, I said, damn. One of the greatest players in, in our generations, you know, Larry Legend, Larry Bird, uh, says every time anybody talks to him about, you know, guys that guarded him back in the 80s, who was the best, he doesn't even hesitate to say Michael Cooper was the best defensive player that he ever played against. What do you think about that coming from a guy like Larry? Of all the accolades that you could win or awards or anything like that, that's probably the one that I cherish the most. But what I always tell people about that is you guys, you, Magic, Worthy, Kareem, I was only as good as you guys were giving me my help. Larry got by me several times, but you were always there, B. Scott. Uh, Magic was always there. So it was like me and you tag teaming on these great scores. The job that I did wouldn't have been great without you guys, my teammates. You know, to me... It's just super, super sad that because of the fact that I was born in the early 80s, I only got to see Larry play like one or two seasons when his back was broken and he was still a very effective player in basketball IQ off the charts, but obviously some of the physical attributes that he had were gone. And just to imagine that I could have seen him play for real, maybe be in the Boston Garden and all those kind of things, it makes me so sad, you know? Uh, obviously, I'm grateful that I still had the VHS tapes and I was able to see reruns of certain games but to see him in the Boston Garden I mean every one of you who had the chance I am so jealous I am so <laughs> jealous because even until today when you have players or journalists saying that for example Luka Doncic who's a great player don't get me wrong uh, comparing him to Larry Bird but to me I could seriously literally see genius basketball genius in this man and uh, for me personally, for example, it's super hard because my only outlet speaking about those things is my YouTube channel. Um, I unfortunately don't have too many people around in my area or in my network that actually go that deep and go that way back um, into 80s, 90s basketball. But yeah, just the thought of being there. Anyway, you guys, let me know in the comments below. Did you enjoy the video? What is your favorite Larry Bird story? Did you see him play? Um, Share some love about Larry Legend, and I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine. All right, y'all. This wraps up this good old part two of this video. Wraps it up, wraps it up. But anyway, man, this is back to just appreciate y'all so much, man. Just We hit 2K subs, man. We just going to keep running it up, y'all. We're going to keep running it up, and I appreciate y'all from the bottom of my heart, like I always say. Just, just, it's just like I'm shocked, but it's just like you gotta keep going, just gotta keep this train rolling, like I always say. But, um, yeah, definitely got a new video coming up, so definitely look out for that. Definitely look out for that, and uh, yeah, just let me know what y'all think of this video, y'all. And uh, leave your comments down below. You got some videos you want me to do, leave them down in the comments, and that's about it. And then subscribe if you're new, hit that like button, turn on that bell. And I am out of here. I'm going to get on to the next video for y'all. But like I said, we hit 2K subs, man. And I appreciate it. Appreciate it. And we're going to keep going up. But for now, I'm out of here. I love y'all so much. I'm out. Peace.